care for the means oh, to get out. Way to help support normal immune function. Mahalagang paalala, ang Scott sa hindi gamot at hindi dapat gamitin pang gamot sa anumang uri ng sakit. Take care for the means to get Way to help support normal immune function. Mahalagang paalala, ang Scott sa hindi gamot at hindi dapat gamitin pang gamot sa anumang uri ng sakit. Hi to everyone joining us from uh, the VGC or VGC right now and those who are joining us online. Hello to all of our mamas he right here at Mommy Mundo Expo Mom. Okay, so let's get into our next talk this time. You know, I'm sure a lot of us parents here really panicked <laughs> um, when there was a rise in COVID-19 cases or infections in children just last January. So that was very recent. We all did our part in stocking up on vitamin C. We also had our multivitamins, our staple medications. Uh, it, we were in a frenzy, right? So during a Mommy Mundo COVID care session, we also learned that parents can help boost their children's immune system with a diet rich in, we've got antioxidants such as vitamin C or zinc to really keep them healthy. Now, the type of food that we eat is also very important in helping us to maintain a healthy body. And a healthy diet really helps equip our kids with the right nutrients or required nutrients for immune responses to promote recovery and protect against future infections. So today, with the number of uh, COVID cases down um, and at alert level one, we are definitely blessed that we have more freedom finally to go out and step out with our kids. But that is all the more reason that we have to make sure our kids' immunity, it stays in top shape. We definitely cannot let our guards down. I think we know this uh, much by now. So our next discussion, it's so important because we are going to be letting you all in on a dis an exciting discovery that we have. Children can also often be like picky eaters, right? And most of them are still discovering the kind of foods that they like, the ones that they don't like, even with their vitamin C supplements sometimes. If you like mine, yes, uh, it can be a challenge sometimes. A good thing that these days we now have delicious, we have convenient ways to support our children's immunity. A great example for this one is Scott's vitamin C. So this is a chewy, a fruity pastel that kids absolutely love. It provides 100% of the daily recommended amount of vitamin C for kids aged three to six years old. So this time we can actually go ahead and find out how it can support a healthy diet and our kids' um, normal immune function. So to everyone out there, 
good health never tasted so good. And of course, we are here to uh, hear and learn from an expert on child immunity. You're not going to be hearing the, the, the details from me. Don't worry. We have an expert joining us here today. So joining us is Dr. Miggy Villanueva. He is a pediatric and adult allergist and a clinical immunologist We've prepared a few important questions to really help us improve our kids' immunity. So he's here to share his wisdom. Of course, we also want to hear from fellow moms today. So Din Bautista is a full-time homemaker, part-time everything else. I love that. So most interested in real-life stories, in parenting, self-care, jump rope. Uh, I'm going to have to have a separate talk with her on that one. And she's a mom to Monica, who is turning six soon. And finally, we have Alexa Gutierrez. I'm sure she's a familiar face. Um, she's a wonderful mompreneur, a co-owner of the well-loved clothing brand Shop Laya. I'm sure you've seen this in our many uh, Expo Mom events. And mom to two beautiful girls. We have Arya, who is seven, and Ezra, who is four. So to everyone, please welcome our moms and, of course, Dr. Miggy. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Zara. Hi. Good afternoon to both of you. <laughs> Alexa is going to be joining us in a little bit. But first of all, hi, Dr. Miggy. Please say hi to everyone. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here today. We love having you with us, Dr. Miggy, and we're excited to learn a lot from you. Hi, Din. Go ahead and say hi to everyone joining us. Hello. Good afternoon <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> I hope Thanks, everything, Din. everyone is okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Din. Yes, we do help, hope that everyone is doing well at this time and enjoying our talk so far. And finally, hi, Alexa. It's been a while. I hope Alexa can hear us. Um, I think she might. Oh, there, there. Okay. Say hi, Alexa. Thank you for joining us. Okay. So to all of our members or um, audience members, I think, Alexa, you are currently on mute, actually. You're on mute. Okay. Let's give her a few seconds so that she can say, there you go. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you again. Hi, Mommy Din and Dr. Maggie. Hi, Kira. It's so nice Hello. to see you again. Yeah, it's so nice to see you, Alexa. And in fact, it's so nice to meet Mommy Din and Dr. Miggy also virtually. And I'm sure we're going to get together again uh, very soon um, at another Expo Mom. Soon. But for now... <laughs> Yes, very soon. But I'm sure you, some of you are also going to be seeing everyone at, on ground. But right now, we're here virtually um, in our hybrid event to learn more together. And I'm sure a lot of our audience members, whether here, online, or on ground, um, they are ready with some questions for you guys, especially for Doc Miggy. Uh, so if you guys have any questions and you guys want to learn more, please don't be shy. Uh, type them down in our comment box. This is not the time for you to shy away from typing comments or questions there because we really want to maximize our time and uh, the wisdom that we can get from this talk. So please go ahead. Now again, thank you to Doc Miggy, Din, Alexa, Thank you for being with us. We do have a bunch of questions uh, that we want to uh, discuss with you guys. So let's get right to it. I'm going to start with, um, we mentioned, I mentioned earlier about the surge last January. So uh, we have different perspectives here from you guys, and I'm sure everyone has their own story. I'm sorry own story. Um, uh, but for you guys, can you please share your own family's experience during the Omicron surge last January? Um, did anyone in your family get infected? And how concerned were you during that time that you might catch COVID-19 if uh, you had, especially if you had never had it before? So let's start it off with Doc Miggy with this one. All right. So, well, unfortunately, yeah, I did catch it last January and my family members were also affected with that. So uh, very fortunately, on the other hand, we did just have very mild symptoms like a fever, a runny nose, an itchy throat. That was basically it. But it's still very stressful during that time, especially because you had to take care of yourself and your family members. And uh, uh, there are a lot of factors that are coming into play, like if you have children that are not yet vaccinated at that point yeah. in time then of course it can be very stressful, but luckily and thankfully everyone recovered completely. 
quite fast and with very minimal medications. That's well, you know, great news and also unfortunate news in there. But uh, the the I think what we can take away is you guys had mild symptoms and you guys are all okay now. So uh, thank you for sharing that with us, Doc Miggy. How about let's hear from Mommy Din? What was your experience like uh, during the surge in January? Well, um, I admit we are guilty of also meeting up with friends and family <laughs> during the Christmas season. I think most of us are really guilty of doing that because the cases were low and it yeah. feels like you haven't seen your family members for a very long time so we did meet up with them fortunately we didn't catch any so um we we prayed and prayed that every meet up we won't get any symptoms and yeah thank god we, we never caught it so so were you there. extra <laughs> Were you extra paranoid during that time? Yeah. Because, you know, it was everywhere. Like, everyone on my Facebook timeline almost, they were posting their own experiences. So, definitely yeah. red alert for a lot of people. How about you, Alexa? Red what alert, was your yes. experience? Yeah. <laughs> diba? Um, kung dapat green and red alert lang nung time na yun, medyo mas naging on the red side tayo. Alexa, what was it True. like for you during that time? <laughs> Um, do you have any experiences with uh, personal experiences with actually getting the 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 virus during the surge last January? Um, so I yes, I remember uh, this so well because I remember the whole almost. I mean, I can't say for everyone, but a lot of my friends, the mommy community, yeah. where we were all affected uh, by the surge, and um, yes, it did affect our family. But I can say my daughter, who really loves um, Scott, she was the last one to get it. So um, when they invited me for this event, I was like, how timely? Because she loves the gummy bears mm -hmm. and she eats them like candy. Sometimes I have to tell her, stop, okay? Vitamins, you have to stop. So <laughs> she was the last one to get it. And my husband, who also takes vitamins regularly, did not get it. So um, you can really um, attest to that, that you really need to take your vitamins uh, daily. Um, so, so yeah, that, 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 that's what happened to my family. Thanks, Alexa. So that really just proves to us that if ever you had um, become lax at any point because uh, because of the pandemic, we became all very aware, very conscious, but there was like a, a bit of a, a time where there was pandemic fatigue and we kind of we're a little you know trying to stay away from um everything that we had gotten used to because it it was a bit better but you are reiterating that it is so important and that's what today's talk is all about reminding everyone how important it is and how um vital it really is to make sure that you are uh taking care of your immune system making sure that you are your kids are getting the right um sustenance to keep them healthy so we're gonna dive into more of that in a little while but what i'm more curious about at this point actually is you've already mentioned alexis mentioned uh that they were especially her daughter was very religious in taking her vitamins so i'm curious about your your routine your immunity routine in your own households what is that like for you guys um Maybe you could give a bit of a comparison a few months ago and also maybe now that cases are much less. Uh, what is your routine these days in your home for your family? We can start with Alexa for this one because you already started on it. So my husband is so into the vitamins routine, his family and his dad and his mom. They take a lot of vitamins daily. And so I think we got in, well, he mainly got influenced with this. And my youngest daughter who is always with her grandfather. Mm -hmm. They take vitamins every day. I think it's their morning routine after their juice or their, you know, their, their healthy drink. They, they take their vitamins. And so that really helped them compared to me and my daughter. We are a bit lax. You know, some days we miss, some days we do take it, you know. And so if you, you know, comparing what happened to me and my daughter, we got it first, Aria. And yeah. Ezra did not, got it at the very end, the most mildest. And my husband, who takes it religiously, never got it. Wow. Um, it, it just goes to show 
how important it really is to take your vitamins daily, uh, especially if you know you hear about a surge or you're going out. You're gonna be with a lot of people. You know about that. I think um, we I think we learned our lesson. My daughter Aria and I learned our lesson, and now <laughs> we're really trying our best to take our vitamins daily. Thank you for sharing that, Alexa. I love how you know. Um, there's really there's there's two of you. It's you and your daughter learning from your husband and your other daughter as well. Um, uh, so there's really some a, a learning. There was a learning curve for you guys, and now uh, we're trying to make better choices uh, moving forward. So how about you, Naman Mommy, then? Um, in your own home, do you have any routines that you guys, uh, that you have implemented to make sure that, you know, things are still better moving forward, even though cases are down these days? Yeah, actually, this pandemic has um, made, has brought changes to our home, especially in implementing, like, routines for health reasons. Um, we always we make sure that we incorporate um, vegetables and fruits mm -hmm. in our diet. Like before, because we will always, um, we, we were not so mindful of the food intake. You know what I'm saying? But now we, we make sure to religiously add them to our diet. Mm -hmm. And number two is we have started into like exercising. We have to make sure that our body, as a, you know, on top of everything else, we have to make sure that our mind and body is both healthy. And of course, the vitamins. To be honest, my last, the last time I really just took vitamins was when I was pregnant. So that was like six years ago. <laughs> Had this pandemic didn't happen, you know, I won't be taking any. But good thing my husband, I, I call him the DOH in this family because he's the one <laughs> always um, reminding you. me too. It's like, yeah, he will uh, he will put the vitamins on the table and make sure that I won't forget it. And for my daughter, she's the one getting her own vitamins because the mom brain is real. So oh, good thing she likes Scots. So she would be mm -hmm. the one to take her own vitamins every morning. So there, those are the things that we really, really, really make sure to do every day. <laughs> Uh, you guys have covered yeah. all bases, b basically, the right? So really making sure that sa food, yeah. sa exercise. Yeah, and I love, I love the the common theme here. The the husbands, the dads are the ones who are more, um, yeah, yes, are more conscious. No, nakakatuwa. Proactive, nice yes, yeah. yeah, very proactive in making sure that you get your vitamins. Uh, and I can super relate with what you mentioned that you know, for some of us, I. I uh, I won't name anyone, but it might be me. <laughs> uh, I also wasn't very <laughs> conscious about taking vitamins until I got pregnant True. Uh, the first time. And then when I got pregnant again. So it's so, but you realize how important it is, Pala, because you're uh, much important, healthier also. Very. During your, you realize in the back of your head, oh, yes. man, no, that was doing good for me. I should yes. stick to that. Um, but so I hope a yeah. lot of the other moms are also going to remember that uh so doc miggy i'm very curious to hear from your point of view from a health professional's point of view what is your routine in your own home um given that the the cases are lower now did anything change did you add anything uh what's it like in your house for your immunity routine All right so we talk covid19 really just changed the entire landscape of our everyday lives it has changed our daily routines that we've taken for granted like meeting up with people things like that. Now, all of those just yeah. disappeared in a snap. And there was an extreme focus on uh, personal hygiene. And of course, all of these changes can be very stressful, especially to parents uh, who are really concerned about boosting their uh, immunity of their family. And just like the, the law enforcement of your family, like the, the fathers right there, <laughs> making sure that everybody stays in line in terms of taking their medications. So kudos to all those dads out there. Now, of course, I'd like to emphasize that the cases are down. Yes, that is true. But COVID-19 is still present, very much so. So we still have to keep our guards up. Okay, so we still have to wear our face masks, get vaccinated, and of course, uh, an emphasis on boosting immunity. Now, how exactly is uh, the routine that we try to incorporate in our daily lives? Well, fairly simple enough. We try to get um, adequate amount, adequate amounts of sleep because sleep deprivation can cause dysregulation of your cytokines. Uh, it may sound like a, it's a big word, but really cytokines are something that we need in order for us to be able to have good immunity. So for toddlers and infants, we need they need around uh, 10 to 14 hours of sleep. Adults need much less than that. They need about 7 to 10 hours of sleep. So try to get as much sleep as possible. 
course, a healthy, balanced diet and can provide all of the necessary uh, macro and micronutrients uh, to avoid malnutrition or obesity. Um, of course, um, the micronutrients are also very important. Uh, we try to make sure that all of these elements that play an important role in the immune development, uh, we, keep to, we try to make sure that they are up to the, the RDA or the recommended daily allowance in terms of the amount that they should be taking. And aside from nutrition, uh, they've also emphasized, like Mommy Dennis also emphasized, exercise. Uh, we also need exercise, not just for adults, but definitely for kids. They need age-appropriate exercises uh, because good physical exercise and enough exercise, regular physical exercise is a good modulator of the immune system. So be sure to eat healthy, sleep well, exercise adequate amounts, and take your micronutrients. So uh, to add to that, uh, Doc McGee, are there any, what are the general uh, vitamins, kind of vitamins and supplements that you would rely on to keep your child healthy and strong? Maybe you could share that with us as well. Right. So uh, there, was, uh, uh, there were a lot of studies that came in during the time of the pandemic. Uh, there were some vitamins that proved to be very useful, some vitamins that proved to be quasi-useful, but the ones that kind of came out on top are really um, ascorbic acid, so that's your vitamin C, zinc, yes. Uh, and vitamin D. Those are the three ones that are really had a extreme focus in terms of the um, micronutrients that we should be trying to make sure we make we have adequate amounts of to boost our immunity during this time. Okay, so we were kind of uh, made aware of of the 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 initial ones that you mentioned. So uh, ascorbic acid, zinc. Uh, we were we were a bit more informed, uh, especially throughout the pandemic. So to add to that is also vitamin D. So I hope everyone is taking their notes just in case they weren't aware of these just yet. Um, now that you've mentioned the things that we need to do to make sure to uh, keep our family's uh, immune system in check and to keep them healthy, you also mentioned that, yes, the uh, alert level is down, but we still uh, have to remember that COVID is out there. So my question for you guys now is... Um, Given the situation, it is, uh, the numbers are down. We aren't getting as uh, many. Um, the threat is much lower than it used to be. The, has that made any changes in your movements uh, as a family? Because I'm sure, like I mentioned earlier, there has been some sort of fatigue. Uh, we haven't, we weren't able to bring our children out for a very long time. Uh, yeah. You, you lost experiences in, you know, spending time with them outside, seeing things, even something as simple as going to the mall or to, to the park. We were deprived of those things for a while. So my question is, these days, do you find yourselves kind of stepping out or spending time outdoors a little bit more often? Um, please share that with us. Maybe we can start with Mommy Din for this one. Yeah, yeah. Um... We, we now uh, value outdoors. So recently, <laughs> yeah. we have been into camping trips. So we, we realized how, how important it is for, for us, for the kids, not just for the kids, but for adults also to be exposed out there. I, uh, I believe that it would also help them build a better immune system if they are exposed to like sunlight, to the grass, mm. to, to even the dirty soil. So the camping really helped us, and um, we we also since we took for granted, you know, the the going out with friends and family. This is now our opportunity to make up with them, you know, share <laughs> time with some friends, but outdoors because it's still, you know, ah. still COVID is out there. Yeah. So we have to have a better venue for meet up. So it has been a very good avenue for us to catch up, and at the same time be um what do you call that be more exposed to nature uh -oh. you know? i was going to so, say hey, parang, yeah. parang more exposure pero good exposure because you want them to experience yes, um yes. Uh, like what you mentioned like and what dr mickey has mentioned vitamin d so getting their their you know uh exposure yes, outdoors vitamin, getting, yes. yes yes and getting exposed to uh, the good things of the earth uh so that's been yes. your recent uh, change in your movement. So thank mommy the pandemic really. <laughs> yeah, you appreciation of that, de ba? Because if we're not, we're not. Because 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 we're
<laughs> Now it's Welcome something that sa we, Hello, correct, correct. Something we want for our kids. Na alam natin, wow, tama. This would be good for them, and it's a chance for us to also yeah. uh, go out as a family. Alexa, I'm curious. Is there anything similar for for you, naman? Do you guys find yourselves going outdoors more often these days with the uh, uh, the recent changes? Uh, so now that Arya is uh, seven years old and yes. Ezra is four, uh, we decided to be yeah. I think same as mommy did. We also went camping, and I'm not like the camper type. So it was um, it was such an eye opener. I think I think not only the children were exposed and challenged and learned so many things, but I think as parents. You know, camping also uh, really, really makes you learn about just you know how how sometimes you just need a pause and sometimes you just can't do anything about sit- a situation. You know, so so many learning. Um, I think the parents learned so much during this pandemic more than mm. the kids about you know um, health, nutrition bonding being with the family uh you know the outdoors because you know as a culture filipino culture we like staying in the mall being cool yeah. cold you know and but this was all taken away and so we needed to find a different way on how to expose our children to you know um also ourselves you know because we were we were so we were so used to a certain lifestyle yeah. So it was such a learning experience for everyone to experience the outdoors. And, you know, like during the pandemic, if you can't, you have the sickness, what can you do about it? You can you have to drink your vitamins, stay home and be healthy. And so also camping teaches you that, that, you know, when your bed gets wet, you just need to dry it up. You know, you can't do anything. Yeah. You just wait for it. You just so get live. Yes, you, and but you live, you know, you live <laughs> through it. Yes, <laughs> nothing's gonna happen. You just have yes. a wet bed, you know. So things <laughs> like that. Um, a lot of learning, learning for everyone. You know, parents, mm-hmm. moms, dads. Um, not even you know, single. Everyone, I think there's such a. We learned more during this pandemic. That's for sure. There's been a lot of change in priorities for for us, for all of us, no, uh, Alexa yes. and Mommy did, it, especially as parents, uh, really zoning in on what's important for everyone these days. You guys have are trying to convince me to try a camp. I'm not a camping person either, but uh, I feel yeah. like there's a there's no you, a slight you change in me. <laughs> <laughs> because of what you guys are sharing. <laughs> At least once, try it at least once. Uh, okay, m- maybe be- only because my my children need the exposure. <laughs> uh, so we'll look into that. You guys, uh, Doc Doc Mickey, how about you, Pala? I mean, you are I'm sure very busy. Uh, but have you had a chance to really like spend more time outdoors uh, these days? Because uh, we do have less cases as well. What's been uh, going on with you, Doc Mahinaman? Well, I mean, definitely nowhere near uh, pre-COVID. But yes, I do find myself yes. um, having a little bit more courage to step out of the house now. A lot of hybrid setups are ongoing yes. right now. Whether they're in schools, you have hybrid work, you have hybrid conventions, and so on and so forth. Um, I have had uh, the courage to see some friends that I haven't seen for the past two years. But uh, still, we never let our guard down. We still put on our masks make sure that everybody's uh, vaccinated and we try to keep a healthy immune system. And I applaud um, Alexa and Mommy Din for um, having the courage also to go out and expose their children uh, to to camping because uh, immunologists like to um, emphasize to to moms and to families rather about the hygiene hypothesis that it's not really a good idea to keep children in a sanitized bubble uh, throughout their life. It's it's not going to be healthy for their immune system. Uh, It's going to result in bigger problems uh, along the way. So um, what we always like to say is that a little bit of dirt is actually pretty good for you. 
Okay, so uh, yes. Dr. Miggy approved, uh, Alexa, and then, uh, so, okay, I will try now. <laughs> that was the, the, you will the, try the now. signal. <laughs> Just try not to wet the bed, that's all. <laughs> um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that when, when it happens. A good thing is Alexa's given us some tips as well on how, how to uh, move on from that. So we've we've talked about you know spending more time outdoors these days um making prioritizing being outdoors talaga like exposure to nature and all of that uh always still keeping your masks up and still maintaining the safety protocols to keep our families safe but uh with the changes in the last few months because February, March, April, we've seen a shift. People have been stepping out a little bit more, seeing families a little bit more, friends a little bit more, going to, uh, going on trips a bit more. Have you guys in your personal um, groups, have you had any recent scares or maybe yung mga running moments thinking that you might have caught COVID? Even if the numbers are down, uh, I think it's kind of ingrained in us these days to... Um, if you have some symptoms, you kind of, you jump, you know, to conclusions and you're going to be a bit worried. Uh, I myself had this recently. Uh, did you guys experience anything like this? Let's start with Dr. Miggy first. All right. Um, well, uh, throughout the entire two years, of course, anytime that you felt something was off, yeah. you know, if yeah. you had a headache, if you had colds, if you had a cough, then automatically the first assumption would be, is this COVID or is it not COVID? So. We always try to make sure to um, treat, isolate, and then test, and make sure that uh, if it's not COVID, you know, try to be a little bit more wary, especially about the people around you, because you know, right now, if if you stay in an elevator and then you cough, people just yes. will just look at you really <laughs> funny. You know? yeah. So try to be yeah. a little bit wary about the people around you, um, and if you don't feel fine, if something feels off, then it's better to just stay at home and then wait it out until you feel better. Thank you very much, Doc Miggy. Mommy, Dan, and Alexa, did you guys have any branding moments? You know, um, as moms, I think we're extra, extra when it comes to to these things. Uh, our, our brains really go on overdrive when there's a symptom. Uh, if anyone shows any symptoms, what was it like if you guys had any experiences lately? I'll start with Alexa for, for this one. So my husband is like... Uh covid police so he tells me every day on twitter how many cases there are daily and so that really keeps us in check <laughs> on how the covid is doing and of course our daily vitamins has also helped so it's less running i guess knowing that you know we've already been um it has happened yeah. so we're very like stocked up on our vitamins as doc Maggie said that you know, check, check, check. I checked that all out, like the vitamin C, zinc. We have our, um, and, and our vitamin D. So um, we just feel a little bit more safer with all the, the news as well. Um, also just uh, being well informed about how many cases there are. And also, yes, like if you feel something, um, not like before, I, I would remember in the past, I, I feel a bit sick, you know, I still go to work, you know, I still mm. go to work. And but now I feel like we we are in this, um, in this, we already have this culture of like, oh, you're not feeling well, you already know, you already you tell yourself, work. I'm going to stay yeah. home, you know, I'm going to stay home, I'm going to drink more vitamins today, maybe two, but two more vitamin C, two uh, doses of vitamin C, a little bit higher and stay home drink water and, and and do all the you know wear your mask even at home you know just so nobody gets affected and you know just wait it out so also for the kids i do the same like for example they go out today and i feel like they were a bit exposed maybe there was a bit more people than than i than i would allow them to then the next day i would make them rest maybe two days mm -hmm. you know and so just that Shift. because yeah. I remember back in the day we would always cramp their schedule you know they have yeah. soccer today schedule. the next day they have theater the next day they have this yeah. and every day they have like a certain appointment and this time around I'm able to really relax their schedule in a way that you know today they might have soccer but tomorrow they're not 
they're not they're not gonna they're not gonna make so- there's no soccer so it's like a MWF and mm. if they miss Wednesday just because I feel like they're not feeling well then it's okay and um I think we've become more responsible in a way of listening to our bodies I think that's yeah. the word listening to our bodies seeing if you know how do we feel and asking you know how do you feel today and just going with your gut feel and of of you know of your your health and and really keeping yourself first in mind so that's that's another good thing that has the the pandemic has has helped us as well as yeah. a family so really not pushing your bodies to the limit as much as we used to right especially uh with with uh, the kids as well making sure that they have their rest days and making sure that if there is anything that comes up, any sign of uh, feeling unwell, you make sure that the body has time to recover so that we don't um, allow anything to progress. That's, these are some really good tips so far. Thank you, Alexa. Mommy, then I saw you. You were nodding a lot uh, along with, with Alexa. Yes. Well, what are some <laughs> of the things she mentioned that uh, you were relating with? And also maybe you can share also if you had any scares also recently in your household. Yeah, I definitely agree with what she said. Like, listening to your body and yeah. be more possible with how you feel, what you feel. Because when I had my, my recent scare, like like two months ago, I had like high fever, but I didn't have any cough or cold. But mm-hmm. I had tummy ache. Apparently, it was stomach flu. But I had like 38.7. <laughs> yeah. I immediately informed my the, the people I went to the past mm-hmm. days that I am pe- I'm feeling like this and that. But then the next day, I was okay. I just had to sleep and I just had to hydrate more <laughs> and there. So I realized that before, because you wouldn't like inform naman everyone of what's mm-hmm. happening to you. But since you are more responsible now, whatever you're feeling, you have to share with them. Because <laughs> I had fever. Right, so I right. think that's what the um, symptoms but then I had also like LBM, so <laughs> I think oh, okay, I, I think I'm safe. I just ha- I just have to relax or I mean rest. And with my daughter, after her second dose of vaccine, she had like colds the next day or two days after. So I was a little praying, but then I I told myself that we'll just have to rest because this can be an effect of her, of Pfizer to her. But after yeah. that, she's okay, better than not having any vaccine at all. <laughs> So, as I mentioned earlier, I share with Alexa about being responsible, being just to chill with your own schedule, <laughs> you know, not not to push it too much, with mm-hmm. even even our own schedule, right? We just have to pause. If there's yes. a need to rest, we rest because that's very, very vital that we just lie down. They might think that's a lazy move, but that's very, very important. <laughs> so, that's what I can say. So it's really, I, I love what you guys have uh, both stressed on, or really being more responsible these days and uh, making sure that you, uh, whatever it is that you have, you are aware of it, you inform everyone, and you take care of it so that you can recover faster and just constantly yes. monitoring it. Uh, like I said, Kanina, I can relate to this because um, I did have a cold recently as well, and uh, I kept checking <laughs> the symptoms of uh, COVID and allergies <laughs> or like a normal cold. I had which no joke, I, my husband was getting a little annoyed because he had to show it to me like 10 times just to make sure uh, that I would stop worrying. But uh, Dr. McGee, am I correct? It's kind of allergy season for us now. Uh, about um, yeah, um, anytime that you have, well, in the Philippines specifically, that anytime right. that you have any weather changes, it can trigger an increase in allergic reaction. So there might be an increase in some forms of allergic rhinitis. That is if you are predisposed to having allergic yes. rhinitis. Thank you, Dr. Maggie. <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. That was solely just for, for, for me. <laughs> okay, no, now we are going to uh, go into our health and immunity routines a little bit more. Uh, let's go into some of the specifics. Uh, I want to ask Dr. Maggie, actually, um, I've, I've been meaning to ask, you know, when it comes to our children's food, our kids' meals, some of us have an idea, some of us have done our research, but but. I feel like a lot of us are still kind of, um, you know, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. So, Doc McGee, what should our kids' meals be like 
could you please share with us the ideal diet that is good for good health in our school-aged kids these days? Please uh, give us the information. Go ahead. All right. So um, the Department of Health, DOH, has a program called Pinggang Pinoy. And so it makes it a little bit more easy for um, parents to be able to apportion it, uh, the, appor the correct amount of food for their children. Now, if you have a whole plate, like a whole circle, divide that into four quadrants. Um, one small quadrant or one fourth of the plate should be con composed of your go foods. These are your carbohydrates. Then one fourth will be composed of your grow foods. And these are mostly your proteins. And then half of the plate will be composed of your glow foods. And these are mostly your uh, fruits and vegetables. So in terms of appropriation, that's how much we usually need per meal for, the, for our children. Now, uh, in terms of the quality or the type of the food, uh, school-aged children should be introduced to um, diverse food um, to make sure that they have uh, essential intake of all the nutrients and to foster appropriate growth and development. Of course, we should encourage them to in eat foods such as fruits and vegetables, whole grains, um, poultry, fish, lean meats, and all of these things. Definitely try to avoid, especially for school-aged children, um, food that are high in calories and saturated fats food that have a lot of refined sugars that are low in essential uh, nutrients. These are what we call the empty calorie foods. You have your sweetened drinks, sodas, chips, uh, fries, heavily processed foods. Try to avoid these as much as possible, especially for school age children. And uh, another thing that uh, most parents really try to uh, really don't consider is the liquids that children eat. So right now, what we are recommending is that they drink lots of water, of course, and avoid drinks with water. high calories and sugar. Okay, because many sugar. of our parents, yeah, many of our parents, when they see 100% fruit juice, they think automatically, okay, this is very healthy for my child. While that is true, 100% um, fruit juice is still high in calories and still has a lot of sugar. So you need to kind of regulate the amount sugar. that they're taking throughout the entire day. Um, consuming large quantities of all these sweetened beverages can contribute to early dental caries, um, yes. overweight or obesity, yeah. uh, even diarrhea, and a lot of um, inflammatory diseases in children. So again, uh, selection of the food is very important. The portions of your macronutrients are very important. And even the frequency. So for children in school age, we recommend about three meals a day with about two to three snacks in between. Okay, so Dr. Miggy has given us all the information and um, we have, we have, uh, hopefully everyone was able to take notes or if you get, if you want, you can, you know, just look, go back to this clip and, you know, record that so that you have all of the, inf the information that you would need. But the thing now is um, reality, okay? So we have all the information there. My question now for you is for all the moms joining us here right now, um, you might have been nodding with me, but in your head, you're like, okay, my, my, my child can, some of us have children who have picky eaters, um, for the moms here who are joining us, Alexa and Din, uh, do, do any of you have experience with picky eaters? Alexa, you have two, mommy Din, you have your daughter, um, any of them who are picky eaters, picky with their vitamins, um, what are the challenges in your households uh, when your kids don't want to take their vitamin C's? Also, um, please share them with us. So let's start the man with Mommy Din. Uh, any, any experience with uh, being picky for Monica? Yeah, when, when, Monica was, uh, when Monica turned one, that's when she started being picky. She would only eat rice with soup or rice with crunchy crunchy ulam that's it um, she would only eat that and she would breastfeed so that's how it that that's how it was until she's three now when she got you know when she turned three that's when it improved that's when i told myself okay the face that face is finally over so it really happens so it really happens to you know to, yeah. to kids I, I shouldn't stress myself out um also, when she turned three, that's when she started taking scots, for real. That's when I introduced scots to her, and you know, kids they would like want something gummies, right? Because before I had a hard time giving her um, syrup. I had to mm -hmm. use different methods in order to give yeah. her syrup, right? So the thing when she turned three, that that became easier for us with her 
um, she's, she's no longer picky eater. She would eat whatever I would offer. But mabagal nga lang. Pero still, she, she eats. <laughs> and then the vitamins, it has improved a lot. So, yun. I think I didn't give up on that. So, yeah. I had to offer and offer and offer for alternative. So, there. <laughs> so, continuously offering, not giving up, and also eventually finding the alternative. Yes. Like, with, with you, in your case, she, parang she's also very conscious with texture, no? So, initially, she liked the yung mga, she liked yung mga yeah. crunchy na food, but eventually, she, uh, yes. as long as you continued yeah. offering, na-introduce na rin sa kanya, inaccept na niya yung ibang textures of food. Same with yung, yung vitamins. Oh, oh, I, I think a lot, choice. <laughs> a lot yes. of us can, can relate with that kasi mahirap talaga din for some yung, yung syrup. But, but, but also, uh, some like yes. it, but some prefer like ito, uh, the, the, the pastilles, the gummies, yes. the, they work for them better. So congratulations to you, uh, Mommy Din. Hopefully, tuloy-tuloy yeah. na yan. How, Alexa, with your girls, yes. Arya and Ezra, um, were any of them picky eaters? Did you have any challenges with them when it came to uh, their vitamin C? Even in the beginning, maybe you can share them with us. Um, I really feel, uh, Kara, that you are what you eat, you know, and your children will also see that, and they pick, they pick it from you guys, us, us as parents. I think we play such a vital role in their health and what they eat because um you know that that's why we really need to be like such a an example you know like a walking uh, ambassador for food in a sense that we also need to you know like how will they follow when they don't see so you know we all know that as parents in 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 other in other in other things so really, um, when Elvis and I started this diet during the pandemic, you know, really reading up more and really, um, then we got, but we were aware that we also, we, we wake up in the morning, we have our juice, and then the, the, it's always like a routine, you know, and, and then we have our lunch, then we notice that we're eating too much beef, so we minus the beef out. And the kids, I think they, they noticed our change and they follow and they just continue to follow us so we wouldn't force in a way but we would show yeah. so showing them here's mommy and daddy we're having our juice in the morning you know and then we're like cheers you know and then <laughs> slowly they were like yeah i want to join your you know your 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 little picnic with your juice and so we would you know put uh also encourage them teach them along the way make them make the juice, you know, and when you go to the grocery, really starting with the fruits, like really trying to, you know, invest in so many fruits. I mean, I just realized during the pandemic how actually expensive uh, being healthy, but it's really, uh, you really need to put it in your budget um, for your fruits, for your vegetables every meal having a fruit you know i always tell them you know look at mom every meal we have a fruit and dad we have a fruit every meal so it's protein carbs and a fruit or a vegetable if you can't have a vegetable because you don't like the vegetable today you have to go in the fridge and get a fruit that you like so we make sure also to buy the fruits that they like so it's always about hey we're going to the grocery you may not be able to come today but what fruits do you like? And so we know that Ezra loves oranges, grapes, bananas. Arya loves apples. You know, we know their fruits. We know what they like. And we rotate on that. So we have a budget for that, for their fruit. And we really, and me, it's oranges, strawberries, putting them in the freezer, really, really making it like a lifestyle, yeah. a routine. Yeah. Um, and I think think because of that it was really easy for us to um you know demonstrate but of course there are off days there are days that they don't want to eat the food in the table and but really um just being mindful about balancing it out okay maybe today you can have your you know the uh, the fast food today because you're being picky but just remember you have it you know before we would have it almost every day after their um 
school, we would go to Jollibee or fast or fast food and then go go to the gym. But when we canceled that out, we canceled the gym out, but we replaced it with good food and maybe soccer practice outside or just walking outside. It really encouraged them to, oh yeah, like count, count how many times, be mindful how many times they ate, uh, you know, bad food today and then balance it out with, oh, remember your fruit for this meal, you know, and also doing it as well. Also having that fruit or vegetable in each meal. So everyone needs to do it. So there's no special person. Everyone needs a vegetable or a fruit after each meal. It, it's like a, it's like a prerequisite. Wala na yung dessert. Remember, it would be carbs. Yeah. Our carbs are protein and a dessert. So, More wala carbs. na yung dessert. Financial na. It was replaced with a dessert, but a fruit. Like a fruit or a vegetable. But since the kids, they're very picky about their vegetables. And so, yeah. fruit na lang. We just encourage the fruit for now. And then the vegetables will come, you know, eventually. Just like we all also learn how to eat our vegetables. So in your case, it's really mindful, mindful eating, making the changes between you, husband and wife, and modeling it for the kids. I, I was in my head while you were speaking. It's like, you know, um, I don't know if it's a, a weird way to put it, but you're an influencer to your own children because you're the, the person that they see and you're the first person that they really look up to and sure. uh, follow. So that's what you're doing. You're influencing your children by doing uh, making better choices for yourself so that so that they can uh, see that it's cool and see that, yeah, maybe I should do that too, right? So uh, love everything that you shared with us, Alexa, and really making it a more practical, um, you know, the practicality of, of, of uh, what changes you guys have made. Uh, but obviously, I think a lot of us can relate with... Um, having some challenges some uh, uh sometimes there are phases for our children for us as well to be a little bit more picky with our food uh sometimes even with our our uh our vitamins so now that we know that there's a, a yum year way for us to get our vitamins to get the nutrients uh we know that our children can take their vitamin c with smiles on their faces so thank you very much to alexa and to din for sharing those with us now you guys have already mentioned this both your uh both households are very very um uh, familiar with scott's vitamin c you guys have shared that your your kids love them um, so what about Scott's do you and your kids love most? Because uh, you guys have already shared your personal experiences without me even asking earlier that, that your kids do love them. But I'd like to kind of go into that a little bit more. What is it about it that you guys uh, love? Let's start with, with Alexa. Well, I wish I had my daughter here to really answer that <laughs> for you because she... Uh, I think we started Scott during the pandemic. Um, more, more. I think we do, we just saw it in this, in in the in the grocery, and I was like, hey, let me just try it. It was really a organic experience. So we try. She tried it, and she loved it. Uh, first, Ezra loved it. My daughter didn't actually, honestly, she didn't like it that much. My other daughter, Aria, she. She's the picky eater. So, mm. okay, we didn't really force her. And as I said, uh, beginning this show that, you know, me and Arya got COVID. She's the one who didn't like the Scott. <laughs> and so I think she learned. She was the one who realized it when we were, mm. oh, guess what? You know, Ezra hasn't had the COVID yet. and Or it's here, but maybe it's very light you know, and mm. she was so healthy, so strong. And Arya feeling all weak and she's like, Wow, mom, you know, um next time I'm gonna I'm gonna take my Scots every day. She realized it herself from her experience how important how important it was to take the vitamins. Seeing her sister was all strong and healthy uh during the outbreak of uh, March uh March, you know, a uh, scare. So yes, yeah. The that's 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 that that's what happened to us. So uh, how how nice though it was very organic, both how you discovered it and also uh, how Aria discovered that 
should be taking it as well because she saw it in her. Uh, in this case, it was Ezra who influenced her uh, because she saw how it worked well for her. So thanks for sharing your story, Alexa. Uh, with Monica Naman, then, uh, what, what are the things that you love about Scott? What's your experience with it so far? Well, um, for Monica, she would always tell me that it's so yummy. Mommy, this is so mm. yummy. And um, she likes gummies. So um, when the pandemic happened and when the surge happened, so we, we were talking to her that we have to have um, vitamins every day. And that's when we allowed her to take two. It's, it's so yummy that she wants to take three or more. <laughs> but I said, no, just, just two. So you just have to limit two. So that that's... That's when I know that it that she really likes it. It's really yummy. And um for me naman, since like what I told you earlier, we go camping or we go outdoors, it's very convenient for me to just put it in the bag. Because the it has like a zip, whatever, yeah. diba ganon. So that's what we break. Because naman if the whole bottle <laughs> are weird. So we just have it. And um also when we went to my mom's house and stayed there for a week, for a week. Um, it was very good because I can bring her vitamins with me whenever or wherever we go. So those are the things that we, we read love about Scott's. So there. Thank you. Dear. So, you know, the, the flavor, you, would, you wouldn't think of it immediately, but the, the taste, it being delicious, being yummy is such... Uh, yes an important part or such a, a game changer because like um i, I just want to go touch on what dr miggy villanueva was talking about earlier you know like um when it comes to food of our children some of the the things that they like those are the ones they shouldn't be having just yet like uh their fruit juices yes. you know all that they love that they love it but they shouldn't be having too much of it but in this case you know you have an alternative which is what we're looking for an alternative which can seem like a uh, sort of a treat for them, but it's also very good for them. So something that's delicious, but will take care of their health as well. Their boosts their immune immunity. So uh, thank you to sure. mommy did to Alexa for sharing how it um, it also is very much loved by their own children. So for the other moms out there who are curious, uh, we got uh, their we got their stories, and that might make you uh, you know figure things out a little bit better. Maybe maybe it's something for your kids as well. So now that we've uh, got our vitamin C talk down, let's talk about something that we've also been focusing on a lot, which is diet, healthy diet, making sure you get enough exercise. So how do we make healthy eating, uh, eating healthy fun? This is, it sounds like such a challenge, but I feel like Doc Miggy, um, you will have a, a, a bit of a, could you, Give us a bit of a, an idea of how it could be better also. Yes, Dr. All right. Um, of course, uh, and then Mommy Din has mentioned a while ago that uh, by the time that her child had her first birthday, all of a sudden she became very picky about what she wanted to eat. And this is very natural. Picky, yes. This is textbook. Yes, this is very textbook. No? Mm -hmm. By the time that they become one year old, uh, automatically they become very selective of the type of food that they want. Uh, because this is some sort of, uh, for them, uh, a way for them to exert control over their environment. So selecting food is uh, one of those things that they do have control of, and they like to practice that exertion of control. Very frustrating for parents, obviously, um, <laughs> but it's not something that we should take um, very um, very hard you know, for, yeah. for parents, especially. You just kind of have to wait <laughs> okay. it out, just encourage them to uh, try multiple types of food. It's okay if they don't like it the first time. It's okay if they don't like it the second time, third time, fourth time. You just keep offering it to them. There are some people that say okay. that you have to offer food at least 10 times to a child, um, 10 times that they have to reject it for you to absolutely <laughs> say that, okay, maybe, maybe he really, he really doesn't like this particular food. But you just kind of have to keep trying, okay? Um, in terms of uh, making um, eating fun, okay? Um, there are a lot of uh, ways for us to do this. So you have to remember that, number one, taste is very important for children. Okay? Um, number two, texture can be a very important thing also. I think Mommy Den also mentioned a while ago about the crunchiness. So, so sometimes they really like that. So doing or eating something that has a lot of texture can be very fun for them. The appearance of the food can also mm. be very important. So if you have, let's say, a pancake, put in like a happy face right there, whether you're a good artist or mm. not, you just come up with, <laughs> Something creative, you know, um, have some um, some chicken cutlets cut up in um, funny shapes or something, right? 
these are ways to encourage the children to see food as something that is exciting to eat. And they want to eat that particular type of food. And it makes their nutrition very, very good. Okay? Another uh, method that we try to encourage is that we want children to get involved um, in the mm. kitchen. I think Alexa has mentioned that uh, they bring their kids to, to the supermarket so they can pick out foods. Yes. Of course, the parents kind of have to police that. You know, like, oh, maybe we shouldn't buy that one and put that back and we'll just try these. Uh, delicious fruits instead uh, but ultimately ultimately as alexa did say um the children's the children will really mimic what the parents eat mm. so uh, at some point in time it may be frustrating for the first couple of years especially for the first three years maybe four maybe five but you just really have to keep at it and as you know as, as sarah like you said i really like what you said that you're become the top trending influencer for your children <laughs> you really have to be consistent sure. with it uh, you can't really tell your kids to stop eating chips if you have it, you know, two to three times a day. So if you eat healthy, your children will see that, they will mimic that, and they will eat healthy too, and it will be very beneficial for them in the long run. So always try to make eating fun for your children. Don't make it very torturous to them. Don't tie them on their chairs if they don't <laughs> want to eat. Okay, just keep encouraging them to eat, and they will pick up your good habits. They will also pick up your bad habits, so be very, very conscious when eating around your children. Thanks, Doc Miggy. So presentation is key, making sure that you also enjoy the food that you're making them eat. So, wow, the sayote is so good. It's the best thing I've ever had, <laughs> the parents. And also, yes. um, what you mentioned earlier, uh, making sure that they are always um, uh, ready to, to try new things with you as well, making them a part of it. So thank you very much to Dr. McGee for, for sharing all of that. Now, Alexa and, and Mommy, Mommy Din, I'm sure you guys have your own versions of this. Um, what, what you guys have already used, tried and tested recipes that you use when you want an easy, healthy meal for your kids. Na sure kayong um, kakainin nila. <laughs> Even if sometimes, diba, parang, I, sorry, I have to go back to what Dr. Miggy also mentioned. You know, you can't take it personally because sometimes you work so hard on a meal and they don't want it. It's not you, it's them. Yeah, okay? that's absolutely right. <laughs> you can't really consider children as some form of um, emotional terrorists. So <laughs> yeah. They just really go eat uh, when they're hungry. That's all. That's, yes, all. that's yes. nothing personal. Thank you very much, Dr. Miggy. So, then, uh, Alexa, what are your go-to recipes? You want quick, easy, and you're sure health. You're sure that they're healthy. Um, maybe we can share it with the moms out here who are looking for ideas. Uh, I'm one of them. So, let's hear from Mommy Din first. So. Um, the staple food in our home. Actually, we gravitate talaga siya with tinola, <laughs> sinigang. You know, the usual ulam. Because we don't have a separate food for her. So she eats what we eat. So we have tinola, sinigang, ampalaya, ginisang ampalaya. So all those things, we rotate lang. And if we have like fried meat, we make sure we have like kalabasa or ginisa or chapsuy, ginisang vegetable. So, dun lang talaga. And also, she has snacks. We have to make sure lang that it's less than sugar. I agree mm -hmm. so much with Doc. You know, the juices, fruit juices, we don't offer her that. Because that's really totally high in sugar. So, I don't want any. Not that I'm very being OA on that, but you know, it's for the kids naman. So, there. Mm -hmm. the, just the usual ulam. We just rotate it every now and then. Just to make sure she she will eat. Pang tao na talaga. So, parang ganun uh -oh. lang. So, there. So, Getting her used to what what you guys eat, talaga. Then making sure that she is uh, well versed with yeah. with uh, uh, what the adults eat. Because if you do enjoy yeah. it, then she'll enjoy it yeah. also. Thank you, mommy. Then yes, Alexa, sure. ano naman yung mga go to recipes nyo in your home uh, when you want something that's easy and healthy. So for us, it's basically um, I, I as as I said again, I went to this class uh, about. Um, eating, you know, uh, what what kind of food to feed yourself and your children, um, and so mainly what uh, what we're we're really trying to do is just being mindful about the products that you use. You know, um, yeah, I love uh, I my kids love uh, this truffle pasta that I make with mushrooms, um, but I also try to use. That's the thing; it's really an investment. The best ingredients, you know. A better quality cream, right? Um, you know, I, I think that it, it also makes such a big um, 
a big change in their diet. Uh, yes, fish, a lot of, well, we, we love fish. I love fish. We try to stay away from beef at night, just things like that. Uh, pork is uh, minimal, minimal. We still have pork, uh, but very minimal. And so really sticking to chicken. We do have chicken. My kids love chicken. It's very difficult for them to, I've been trying to shift them away from chicken. But it, I'm having a hard time. But it's okay. You know, I feel like um, yeah, they're very young. Um, yeah. Also, just really trying to be more mindful of what chicken you buy also. So right. just different things like that. Uh, very simple recipes that I get online. I love YouTube. And uh, I make like this Peruvian chicken that's so good with a lot of um, vegetables that for, for the marinade. So you don't mm. basically taste the... You don't basically taste the uh, the herbs anymore, but it's there. Uh, a lot of sauces, a lot of sauces that you can dip your chicken in it. There's uh, also vegetable. It's like a vegetable base. Um, just things like that, being creative. And also, I've been reading a lot about the Japanese way of eating where they really mention they have a school system where they really try to eat. It's just regular Lutong bahay, but mm-hmm. really, I think lutong bahay is the best for our children also. Because when we buy from outside, it really, uh, you know, the quality of the food, we don't know where it comes from. Yes. So also, just really simple food also, you know, tinola, they love tinola, fried fish. Just being particular about that oil that you put inside. Yes. Um, just things like that, uh, just minimal changes. Because we di- we didn't really want to change the menu so much because they're used they're Filipino so I really want them to um, the Filipino food is yummy natural you know uh, and it could be natural it really depends on the ingredients that you put and the type the quality that you put yeah so it was more of quality uh, investing in the quality more so wow our budget for food is 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 so big because we really tried to. Um, the quality of food that we give our children, we really try. But to make it easier, fruit, to, uh, for me, it's really the fruits and the vegetables, the juices. Um, you know, I make a really good orange, uh, strawberry, and uh, strawberry juice. It's simple. It's oranges and uh, strawberry blender. Oh, my gosh, the kids love it. And then what I learned was to put water. So before I would give my kids uh just the whatever I juice and that's all I give but now somebody told me about putting water so as much juice you put you put as much water to kind of remove the concentration and then it could and the sugar the sugar lowering it down and then so now two people can have um you know that drink so adding some water to your to your juices um it's really helpful sugar uh, the sugar, the natural sugar, it's natural, but it's somebody told me, is that true, Dr. Meggie? The um, putting water on our juices to limit the sugar intake, all right? You can try to dilute it to decrease yeah, their um, sugar content. Um, but at, at more or less, uh, we want them to just have about four to six ounces of 100% fruit juice, 100% fruit juice. So it can right. always be divided equally throughout the entire day. So if you kind of water it down, then it might be able to have more mm. servings rather than just one big serving altogether. Thank, thank you, you very, so much for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexa. You, we got a lot there. But uh, the basically what you're saying is really just uh, focusing more on the little details, which is actually not so little because it's making sure that you have better ingredients eating mostly the same things, uh, but just making sure that you have healthier options, healthier choices in the ingredients and uh, um, without sacrificing the the taste, of course, and without sacrificing anything, making sure that your family still loves what you're preparing. So thank you so much. You guys have shared lots of tips, lots of great information, especially, you know, thank you, Dr. Miggy. We're able to really uh, confirm a lot of these uh, things that we uh, have been uh, thinking about uh, for a while now. Okay, so um, 
at this point, thank you very much again to Dr. Miggy. Thank you to Din and Alexa for sharing all of your experiences with us. The Throughout the segment, we I'm sure a lot of the moms out here, they came up with some questions as well. So the, earlier we promised that we'll deal with some of them or we'll, we'll address some of their questions. So now is the time for us to get to those questions. So I hope moms, I you learned quite a few things from this immune uh, boosting session that we've had. Let's check out the questions that we have um, that have been sent in. So I think they're gonna be coming up on screen. Let's ask this first question that I'm seeing actually on our comment section. Um, what should I do if my child consumes more than the recommended dose of vitamin C? Uh, this is coming from mom christine uh yes doc miggy yeah so um the recommended daily allowance of um, vitamin c is, is not really that big especially for school age children falls somewhere between 25 milligrams to about um, 60 milligrams so somewhere in between that that sweet range if they do end up consuming a lot more the ceiling of vitamin c is pretty high so it's not going to be very problematic um, as long as they stay less than 500 milligrams in a day. So that's about more or less about uh, six gummy, gummies. So that's kind of a lot for children, <laughs> but uh, try to limit it to the appropriate amount, like maybe one uh, vitamin or two should be fine. Um, of course, uh, as a doctor, we still encourage that you get uh, the nat from the natural sources primarily, and then you get uh, supplementation as a secondary option. Okay, so for the parents out there uh, who freak out easily, you don't have to. Um, so there's a max number, uh, like so Dr. Mickey has mentioned. Yeah, yeah. so you're One still kind fine. of... You should be okay yeah, with that. No problem. It shouldn't, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for clarifying that, Dr. Mickey. And uh, to Mommy Christine for asking that question, let's check out the next one. Is it okay to give Scott's DHA gummies to children less than five years old? All right. yes, no. uh, I guess I'll take this answer. I'll take yes. this question. Um, uh, the the form of the vitamin is the one that is the most uh, problematic in terms of giving it to less than five years old. Now, uh, if you have something which is in the form of a pastille, a gummy, or a candy, uh, we really don't want children less than three years old to have it. Uh, the reason for that is there is an incoordination in terms of the chewing and the swallowing in children less than three years old. Of course, this can have very detrimental problems. There can be some um, choking. It can be a choking hazard as well. So as much as possible, uh, the recommended age is three years old and above. Um, this is for mainly to avoid uh, choking incidents. And this goes not only for um, a particular type of vitamin, but it also applies to peanuts, hard candies, you know, things like that, um, fresh carrot or raw carrots. Uh, we don't want children less than three years old to be consuming these things. That's that's right. really it. It's not really about the dose yeah. of the vitamin. It's really just the preparation. The dose. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. McGee, for clarifying that. And thank you to uh, Mommy Christine for asking that as well. Um, so hopefully we were able to answer your questions. Uh, to all the moms out here, I think um, we've run out of time actually we enjoyed the conversation a little too much so to everyone to all the moms joining us i hope you learned quite a few things from our immune boosting session in a fun and delicious way just like our scott's vitamin c apart from healthy diet from our exercise regular exercise we also now have a new partner in helping support the normal immune function of kids through Scott's vitamin C. So to uh, Doc Miggy, to Alexa, to Mommy Din, thank you very much for joining us here today. A big round of applause for you guys, please. We appreciate it. Um, to everyone, you know, our Scott's vitamin C, it's chewy pastels. They come in yummy and fruity orange and mixed berries flavor. They provide 100% of the daily vitamin C requirement of kids aged three to six years old, as mentioned earlier. And we promise that it's so yummy, it's so delicious that your kids will be the ones begging you or reminding you of uh, their vitamin C supplement. Yes. And just a reminder to everyone, mahalagang paalala po, ang Scots ay hindi gamot at hindi dapat gamitin pang gamot sa anumang uri ng sakit. Uh, it's just a reminder for everyone. Again, Alexa, Mommy Din, Dr. Miggy Villanueva, we hope to see you guys again very soon. Alexa, I'm going to be waiting on your Peruvian chicken uh, <laughs> recipe on your Instagram. But Mommy Din, thank you for being with us. Dr. Miggy, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. And to everyone, bye guys. I hope you enjoyed this very informative session. 
If you'd like to learn more, please stay tuned because we have another exciting discussion coming right up. Bye, guys! Take your vitamins! way to help support normal immune function. Mahalagang paalala, ang Scott sa hindi gamot at hindi dapat gamitin pang gamot sa anumang uri ng sakit.